Video games play a massive role in today's entertainment. Millions of people from all over the world enjoy video games. Games are renowned for many things, be it new and exciting gameplay mechanics such as games like Portal, maybe it's the exploration and navigation of virtual space such as games like No Man's Sky, the world design and the sights there are to see in the gaming world far removed from reality such as the outer worlds, or perhaps it's the expansive lore, the storytelling the game provides, the gut-wrenching, thought-provoking and downright amazing narratives that some games such as The Last of Us have mastered. But the question is, is video game storytelling effective? To understand video game storytelling, one must first understand the theories behind storytelling and because of this, this video will be split into three parts. Part 1 will explore different storytelling theories, Part 2 will investigate storytelling within video games, and finally Part 3 will provide a conclusion and will answer the question, is video game storytelling effective? Storytelling has been a pillar in human history. From paintings on cave walls to Homer's Odyssey, from TV shows to film, storytelling plays and continues to play a huge part in humanity's everyday life. Storytelling provides entertainment and educates. While examples of entertainment are more common, educational examples include teachings about ethics, science, and the world around us. Truly anything can be told through narrative. As Rob Beisenbach states in his incredibly long book, that anything can be a story. He summarizes that stories are any sort of tale with a beginning, middle, and end. Or moreover, the beginning of an event, what happened, and finally a conclusion. For example, John went to the shop, he bought milk, and he came home. Even though it is very simple, it is a story. This three-point theory can be applied to almost any story in existence. For example, in the film Die Hard, the character is John McClane, the goal is to rescue the hostages, and the challenge or obstacle is the terrorists that have taken over Nakatomi Plaza. Batch goes on to explain that how the character tries to resolve the challenge is what drives the plot, keeping the audience engaged. This simple theory can be applied to any story. However, the basic form is only scratching the surface of what storytelling can be. When creating an expansive world complete with years of history and lore, it is hard to use these simple methods for story structure. And that is why most writers use the hero's journey. Most, if not all, epic expansive stories can be boiled down to 12 steps. The monomyth, a known theory long before it was popularized by Joseph Campbell in 1949 by his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces where he explored the theory that all heroes from all tales, fables, and myths stem from the same basic structure summarized into 17 steps. Campbell inspired many writers with his book, including an author and story consultant, Christopher Vogler. Vogler wrote a book of his own called The Writer's Journey, but more importantly, he worked as a story consultant for Disney in the 1980s. While working at Disney, Vogler released a seven-page memo that would gather Campbell's ideas together and further synthesize them down into 12 simple steps. Starting the character in a status quo or ordinary world to introduce the audience to the world the character knows before the call to adventure takes us to the story. The rest of the steps, such as the crisis and the result, are used to structure the conflict of the story and the relevant reward for finishing that conflict. Half-Life, a game created by Valve, is renowned for being one of the greatest video games of all time and being the game that taught developers how to tell stories through video games. Half-Life opens with the protagonist boarding a train and heading to work at the Black Mesa Research Facility. In the first sequence, the players are introduced to the world through context clues, such as scientists talking about what the facility does, who Black Mesa are, their goals, and what the public opinion on the group is. This is the perfect example of the status quo step. As Evan Stockhill says in his book, Video Game Storytelling, it's the calm before the storm before all hell breaks loose. Half-Life is still seen today as one of the best video games with one of the best openers in video game history. It also still keeps that niche fan base retaining an average player count of 500 a day, even after being 20 years old. The fact that Half-Life still has an active player base after so many years shows that creative gameplay coupled with story is effective. Keith Stewart, a reporter for The Guardian, theorizes that one of the biggest factors for the success of Half-Life is the immersive storytelling. The escapism in the video game is paramount. And Half-Life's Your Trap Tier 2 trope makes it clear that as a player, you are involved. The player is the key factor to the survival of the character, which motivates the player to finish the story and see the outcome. To summarize, storytelling has many different theories and avenues for creation. Whether utilizing the 12-step monomyth like writer Dan Harmon, creator Rick and Morty, or if one uses more simplistic methods like the discomfort method that Pixar uses often. The creation of a story can be linked to any theory. 
Many writers use multiple different theories, such as Evan Stockhill. O'Sullivan talks about video games in his article and states that all video games are inherently mixed media. He goes on to say that whereas most writers can build a world through words, video games have the unique ability to build it virtually and reinforce it with words and world building. O'Sullivan's views are shared with most of the community, which is why bigger games, known as AAA titles, have such huge fan bases because they have a coupling of stories on top of great gameplay. Games such as Fallout by Bethesda, which takes place in a post-apocalyptic version of Earth, with the idea that the Wasteland has not changed people as such, but rather it's a framing device that allows the writer to force the survival aspect of human nature into the spotlight. Games such as the 2018 hit Red Dead Redemption by Rockstar, which introduces a character who views himself in the world with a cynical dual morality and justifies his actions as necessity to keep himself and those around him safe. Games like these are the ones that stand out and the ones that have the biggest sales. Red Dead Redemption 2 sold over 23 million copies as of 2019. That is a massive revenue gain of 1.25 billion, but overall success is not gauged by the number of copies or tickets sold. As earlier stated by Tom Morris, Star Wars has a huge fan base. However, the newest film released in 2019, Rise of Skywalker, sold 30% less tickets on opening day compared to the first film in the trilogy, Force Awakens, making 1 billion less worldwide. Yet Star Wars still has a massive audience, contrary to what is seen as a failure of the last film by many. This is because of the expansive world that the viewer can explore through other mediums, such as books, but more importantly, video games. Star Wars has been making video games since the 1982 Empire Strikes Back game for the Atari 2600. One notable Star Wars game is the Knights of the Old Republic, or KOTOR, released in 2003. KOTOR is considered one of the greatest RPGs of all time and has an average player base of 900 a day, according to Steam charts. Josie, a video game journalist, recently did a retrospective on KOTOR, sharing the belief that it still holds up to one of the best games ever made. As well as winning several awards, KOTOR sold over 1.3 million copies in its first week, becoming the third most successful game of that year, according to Top Lister. Gates, a video game journalist, states Star Wars used mixed media to push further story development. However, the games are mostly positively received, and some even prefer the games over the movies and narrative alone. Gates goes on to state that most fans think KOTOR is one of the best stories ever told in the Star Wars universe, and one of the best Star Wars adventures of all time. The narrative in KOTOR was effective, it is still renowned even 16 years later, as still one of the best stories ever created. Most believe games should be judged on the basis of how well it achieves its goals, rather than the sales. Hence why Skyrim still sells for £50, even though the game is over 10 years old, and has had different versions of the game released under different names, yet the newer releases don't fix any of the bugs or plot holes that the game is filled with. The goal of Skyrim is to give a feeling of exploration, with random encounters that give each player an almost unique experience, letting the player explore this 3D world unlike anything in the real world. A level of immersion and escapism that the game provides each player a sense of uniqueness. However, if the player experience needs to be unique, then why does linear storytelling games such as Uncharted, Red Dead Redemption, The Last of Us do so well? Well, less Red Dead Redemption. Now this is where the video would normally go down the rabbit hole of why Red Dead is a linear story game masquerading as an open world game, and how it fails to grasp either the open world style such as Fallout and Skyrim, and fails to go down the path of the linear story such as The Last of Us and Uncharted. The reason why this topic remains unearthed is because Red Dead succeeds at telling a story. Arthur, the playable character, has such an engaging story that the player stops caring about the game's downfalls, such as its failure to achieve the true open world element, and focuses their attention on the story. The player feels so invested in this character and his family that you forget about all the problems with the game. A downfall of storytelling in video games is a little thing called lure narrative dissidence. Lure narrative dissidence is the disconnect between what is happening in the cutscenes and what is happening in gameplay. For example, in the Uncharted series, there is no connection between gameplay Nathan Drake murdering hundreds of people and Nathan Drake in the cutscenes who is basically a historian with experience in deep sea salvage. Okay. This is also seen in films such as Indiana Jones, a historian who murders multiple people, but his murderous tendencies is never mentioned or talked about within the film. A good form of lunar narrative distance is weirdly by the same company who created Uncharted, The Last of Us. The Last of Us is one of the best games ever made, considered by some as a masterpiece, the closest to a 10 out of 10 a game can get. The game has a lot of killing, but the game attempts to talk about it. Many characters within the game confront the protagonist, Joel, about the people he has killed. The game wants the player to speculate whether Joel is a good guy, or if he's just a selfish man who welcomes violence. 
The game does this by constantly showing Joel use violence to get ahead and violence because it is the easiest course of action. Yet the narrative is about Joel and his relationship with a girl he has been tasked to escorting across America. The unanimous feeling shared by the community on The Last of Us is the relationship between Joel and Ellie, the ups and downs of the relationship, the characters that they interact with, the people the player meets in the game is what keeps the audience engaged. The journey coupled with the game's creative and unique take on the zombie apocalypse is what kept fans coming back. The repetitive puzzles and overall bland combat would make this game quite boring and making the replayability of the game undesirable. But the relationship between Joel, the selfish man who has finally opened up his heart since the death of his daughter and is ready to be a father again, and Ellie, the isolated youth who has never had an authority figure in her life as everyone she has ever cared for has either died or abandoned her. This is what makes the game one of the best. To summarise, effective storytelling is not measured through sales but rather consistent viewership or player base. As Godin states, tribes are about faith. It is the belief of an idea or concept that brings these communities together. So when the concept is an expansive world where each player has the potential to have a different experience or perhaps a different interpretation of the overall story, this brings the community together to share thoughts, theories, and ideas and opinions of their experience with the game. Expansive worlds, exciting twists, and creative experiences all contribute to the effectiveness of a video game. Storytelling plays a huge role in creating these communities, be it a niche audience that continues to play no matter how many years have passed, or the massive fan bases that continue to grow. Understanding that narrative is one of the main aspects of effectiveness of a game, as this is what people talk about years after initial release. An example of this is the already mentioned KOTOR. KOTOR still has a massive player base with daily players that rival most modern games, with the story being the part that people remember most fondly, and that keeps players returning. Another example of this is the also previously mentioned Half-Life. Renowned as one of the best stories in video games from both these examples, one can begin to understand that storytelling through video games is effective at capturing and maintaining an audience. Being able to not only immerse the player through creative world design and gameplay, but to be able to emotionally invest the player with an impactful and thought-provoking narrative that will compel an audience for years to come. And hopefully, the future iterations of audiences will continue to ask more questions, as often art does not give us all the right answers, but it makes us ask the right questions. The social relevance of storytelling in video games is easy to see. These stories need to be told and there's no better medium than an interactive immersive experience like video games. The means to inspire a generation or make a player ask questions about the narrative such as the difference between good and bad. This research is only scratching the surface. The true effectiveness of storytelling in video games and the true overall importance of storytelling within the medium of video games are still yet to be fully realised. The discussion continues, the great lengths one strain to hones one's own interpretation of a narrative, presented by a video game, searching for a true meaning behind it. Players often face the same question when they talk about video games, and to answer the question of, why do you play video games, maybe instead one should ask, why don't you play video games?